All right, what's going on, you guys? Nick here with Nick Strength and Power. So I wanted to talk about a bodybuilder by the name of Paul DeMeo, a.k.a. Quadzilla. He was known for his massive legs, and unfortunately, I can't make a video about Paul DeMeo without mentioning his untimely death on June 2nd, 2005, at the age of 37. Now, unfortunately, I've had to make quite a few videos about bodybuilders that have passed away, and I wish the numbers weren't as high as they are, but unfortunately, the numbers are there, and the, and the content for videos is there as well. So I want to make people aware of these things that have been happening in the bodybuilding industry. So Paul DeMeo's death, the cause of death was listed as a heroin overdose. But there's a lot of speculation as to what really happened with that overdose and why it happened, including some speculation by Ed Connors. Now, for those of you who know who Ed, who Ed Connors is or who don't know who he is, this guy was the guy who founded the Gold's Gym franchise. This was the creator of Gold's Gym. Um, so this guy is a very well-respected name in the bodybuilding community. And this guy went on record in an interview saying that he believed there was some foul play involved in Paul DeMeo's death because towards the end of Paul DeMeo's life, um, he was selling off his trophies and trying to get money. Um, and he was just really deep into recreational drugs. And apparently the very next day after Paul DeMeo overdosed, his best friend also overdosed on heroin the very next day. So the speculation is that him and his friend they had the same drug dealer, and they both owed this drug dealer money. So potentially, the theory is that this drug dealer possibly uh, intentionally gave them a bad batch um, to kill them so they would overdose on a bad batch of heroin. So that's the speculation because it was just too ironic um, or too big of a coincidence that him and his friend would die within a day of each other, and they were both heroin users. Um, both probably using the same source. So that was the speculation. It was never proven. It's always just kind of been speculation. But there was a lot of controversy with Paul DeMeo and kind of the shady things that he got into um, later in life. So a lot of people blame a drug called Nubane. Now, Nubane was a drug that was really popular in the 90s for bodybuilders. It's basically an opioid pain medication, and it kind of served as a gateway to other recreational drugs for these bodybuilders because these bodybuilders would use Nubane um, as a pain reliever so they could train harder, they could train past injuries, they could train through the pain, and they would take Nubane, and eventually they would develop a tolerance to it, and eventually they would graduate on to other drugs, uh, harder, harder drugs and other recreational drugs um, that weren't just for pain relief. They would graduate on to things for, to get high. Um, so Nubane kind of served as a gateway drug for a lot of bodybuilders from the 90s, and that is speculated to be kind of the gateway drug for Paul DeMeo. Paul DeMeo used Nubane and then ended up becoming a heroin addict later in life. Now, later in life, Paul DeMeo had all kinds of problems. He was in jail several times. One time, he was in jail for spitting on his girlfriend, spitting on his wife, actually. And then he also spent two years in prison for shooting at his girlfriend over some kind of drug dispute. So there was all kinds of shady stuff going on with Paul DeMeo um, towards the end of his life and after his bodybuilding career. But let's go ahead and go through some of his best uh, bodybuilding placings. So in 1991, he won the NPC Junior Nationals heavyweight division and the overall. In 1991, he also placed third at the NPC heavyweights. Um, in 1992, he placed fourth at the NPC Nationals heavyweight division. In 1993, he placed third at the NPC USA's heavyweight. In 1994, he won the overall and the heavyweight division at NPC Nationals, and that's where he turned pro. Then in 1995, he placed 12th at the Mr. Olympia competition, 10th in 1995 at the England Grand Prix, 9th at the Germany Grand Prix, and then 9th at the Spain Grand Prix. So 1995 was the last year that he competed in the IFBB and placed. Um, so that was kind of where his career took a turn for the worse, and that's where he kind of kind of went down that, that drug-addicted past or path. Um, so his bodybuilding stats, he was 5'10", and at the peak of his career and competition condition, he was 252.5 pounds, and his off-season uh, weight was 270 pounds. So he's a pretty big guy. Um, so a lot of people will recognize him as being a guy that never really lived up to his potential because he definitely had tremendous potential to move forward and improve his placings. Because if you think about it, in 2005, when he died, he was 37. So in 1995, when he stopped competing, he was only 27. So he had tremendous potential to improve his, improve his physique, improve his placings, 
and to move forward with bodybuilding. But that's when the drugs kind of took over. And that's where he took a turn for the worse. And then he was never really heard from again on, on the bodybuilding scene. Um, so Paul DeMeo was definitely one of the bodybuilders that will go down in history as not living up to their full potential and just being an unrealized potential in bodybuilding. So please give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Nick Strength and Power, signing out.